Okay, if you're a runner or a triathlete, or just playing sport and running around and getting shin splints on the inside of your shin, then I've got some strengthening work for you to do to try and get it from acute phase back to return to running. Now, we're dealing with tibialis posterior. So the medial tibial shin syndrome, shin splints down this side, not the lateral side, this side, where this muscle runs down the inside of the shin, right in the in inside of your medial malleoli, and that's where the tendon ends up down the bottom there on the inside. We're dealing with not the tendinopathy part here, which you can get, we're dealing with the muscle inflammation and injury part up here. So this does cover tendinopathies, but we're gonna focus on the muscle part for this exercise. So for when you strengthen it, when you're in an acute phase, we'll go through that first, we're gonna do some isometric work, which is gonna help you if you're really, really sore and you can't even run, then we're gonna work on some banded stuff where you go inversion, e-version, working on that concentric, especially working on that eccentric part, which I'll show you. Then we start focusing on the real strengthening phase, which is in a weight-bearing position off a step called our medial arch raise. Now this takes care of both the strengthening of the inside part here in a functional weight-bearing position, what you're doing when you're running, but it also works on the arch, which is a very really common area to be flat or when you're pronating to be quite weak. So we work on two things in that exercise. It's a real favorite of mine. Then we progress to our calf raises. Now I'm gonna do two sets of different calf raises. One is where we're doing a double calf raise off a step, but we've got to use a ball to help with the increased work of the inside of the shin. Then we, of course, we work on a single leg calf raise with a lateral band that's gonna work on our bias to give us some inversion work, some extra strengthening on one leg. So we'll go through each one of those one by one. So let's start off with the first acute phase. Now, not many people will need to do this, but for you guys who are really acute and you saw you can't even run, so you're not even returning to running yet, then you want to start working on some stuff to begin with. Now, what I would do is work on isometric work, which means static, not moving, but we're going to do inversion, so isometric inversion. So if you find something like this, a pole, could be a sofa, could be a chair, something that's not going to move, you're going to push the inside of your big toe into it that way. So if you look at this, I'm going to go this way, Okay, so I'm pushing inwards, which is going to work on the inside here. But because I'm stuck against something, I'm not going to move. So when I push hard as I can, you can't see that, but I'm pushing into that block with my big toe as hard as I can, and that's going to be an isometric contraction for around about 30 seconds. If you get to a minute, great. Sit below pain a little bit. I don't really want this making you worse in here, so don't sort of well be careful you don't flare this up you shouldn't do with isometric work but this is low level stuff but it keeps it going until that real acute inflammatory stuff calms down and you can start working on some strengthening the second phase before your weight bearing is using a band doing inversion inversion this one's really important for those people who have problems pronating and i'll show you why so if i put this band on say the front part so your forefoot so dot around about the big toes there i need enough tension on this that the band's trying to pull me into eversion, all right? So therefore, I have to invert, all right? So I'm doing some strengthening work here with a band loaded up. Great non-weight-bearing stuff. But if you're one of those people who does struggle with shin splints, clearly, because you're watching this video, but if you're also one of those people who has a bit of a flat foot, okay, you pronated the heel, you may find that the concentric phase is good, but the eccentric phase is really sort of weak. Or you try and grow backwards and it's real jittery. Okay, and that's your lack of eccentric control into that position. So if you look at me, I'm gonna plant my foot there. Okay, I don't want my knee moving at all. So when you look at that, you can't watch your knee do this. So you lock your knee down. And with that, I want to pull it into inversion. So I'm pitting on my heel. Now, if you watch my foot, I'm slowly letting that band take me back. Now you can see, see I'm a bit sort of jittery with that. I'm fine on the way in, okay? Concentric's good, remember that's the stronger phase, but my eccentric, when I'm slowly letting that tibialis go, goes a bit b -b 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 like that. Now if you're like that, it means you've got a weakness in that muscle into that eversion phase, all right? Or well, the, the eccentric part of inversion, all right? See like that? You have to work on that. Now, I don't have shin spins. Again, I do have shoes that are quite stable. I do have a pair of orthotics, but with this sort of thing, if you don't have any of that, or you don't need it, but you're still in that week, I would seriously try and work on that because that is part of maybe why you're getting the shin splints in the first place, is you do have a weakness in the eccentric part. And that's because 
If you're a pronator and you drop and crash down, all right, you don't have much control there. So working on that is quite important for you. Once you've done that one, then we're gonna work on some weight bring stuff. Now I'll keep your shoe off for that because what you're gonna do is use something like a step like this. Okay, it could be a stair in the house, could be a box in the gym. You're gonna do some arch raises and you need to be on the side of the step and I'll show you why. Because you've gotta lift up and down. I want you crashing below the height of the box. So to start off with, you're gonna have the big toe off the edge of the box but from the second toe to the fifth toe on the box. And at the back, half of your heel is sort of sitting off the box. And that allows me to crash downwards below the height of the box like that. All right, something to pivot on. Now, what I want to do is do that in a weight-bearing position. I want to stand on that box. You can hold on to something. I don't mind about the balance issue here. What you're going to try and do, and you can even put this foot down if you like, is lift up the arch. See that? but try and keep the big toe down. Big toe meaning, not that, that is your big toe, but this here, the mat head. All right? I want you to not let it roll up into inversion like that. We're not trying to roll outwards because you're just gonna put weight through the outside of your foot and that's not how you're gonna run. What I want you to try and do is see if you can increase this arch by thinking about shortening from this mat head here to your heel, okay? So if I crash down and flatten it out and lengthen it, I want to think about lifting that up like that. Can you see that? Now I've got a pretty flat foot. I prone it quite a bit. I'm not very good in there, but I can still lift that up into here. Okay, I've still got strength in there. And hey, I don't have shin splints. But some of you might find this really hard to do to try and lift that up. I still lift here a little bit because my foot here, because I prone it, I've got some varus. I've got the shape of my foot is actually up like that anyway, so it's very hard for me to keep that down. But this work here not only works on the arch, but also works on your tibialis posterior to lift you up. So you've got to double whammy with this one. I love this because when you're weight bearing, you've got some load. Okay, when you've put your foot down, you can work on the movement, but it's not much strengthening going on. So if you can start off perhaps with your foot down, work on this movement here, nice and slow. Once you've got the movement and you've got your arch working, then you can weight bear on it and start working on trying to lift up. It's going to be harder to keep your big toe down, but that will be much more functional for when you're running because you're weight bearing. All right? So definitely work on that one and try and work on reps and reps and reps and sets of that to try and prove brain to muscle to arch to sort of fix the thing, whole thing that's happening that's causing your problem. Now, you still have to do your calf raises because calf strengthening is really important when you've got shin splints. Put your shoes back on with this one because you'll need the grip of your shoe on the edge of the box otherwise you sort of slip off the box or you have to grip on with your toe so put your shoes back on and that'll allow you to relax the front of the foot when you drop down now what i would do with your first calf raise is use one of these could be a tennis ball but we're using a trigger point ball when you stand on the box i want you to come quite close okay you're going to try and put that ball between your heels now the reason you're doing that is so you're pushing your heels together. So I can go off the box all the way down into dorsiflexion. And then what I want you to do is push up into a calf raise, but I'm keeping pressure on the ball. What that's gonna do is make me work a little bit harder on the inside. You just gotta be careful you don't roll your feet out at the toes into too much inversion, all right? So you're trying to inversion at the heels, but not at the toes. It's quite difficult to do. You just gotta be careful also, you don't crank up this muscle too much, okay? You don't wanna be getting any cramp on the inside gastroc, okay? You wanna be working on this part. Of course, you can't differentiate the two, but just make sure you're not overloading this one, all right? Now, when you need to go single leg, because you gotta do single leg work, what I would do is get a bit technical. Try and use a band like this, that's a looped band, this is a mini power band, attach it to something low. Now, if I'm doing my right leg, here's a tip for you. It's got to go on the side. If you think like, if it's on my right side, that band is attached to the right. Don't put it that way. We are trying to create a force to pull me like that, okay? To pull me down into eversion trying to pronate me, right? I'm gonna try and fight that band. So if you imagine this tension's here, I'll just show you before I do it, is I'm gonna try and pull that way. I'm trying to work on my 
inverters, my TBR post area, to fight that direction there. All right? It's also going to give me a bit more stability work and traction going on there. So what I want you to do, get a bit of tension on that. Listen, not too much because you'll be all over the shop. And what I want you to start off with is maybe have this leg down just to keep your balance. Okay, so a bit of tension there, and you're going to go up into a calf raise and down. The first thing you're going to notice is it's going to try and pull you out. Okay, you've got to try and really keep your big toe down. All right, as you come up, try and work on fighting that tension there. Okay, now when you get good at it, then you're trying to go single leg. You'll find we take that band off. Okay, you go, oh, that's heaps easier. It's the load that way that makes you really unstable. Now that's going to help you with some of your control work that you've been doing to try and improve what your foot does when you land, when you run, to help combat the cause of these shin splints. It strengthens it up, also helps fight that cause that's been going on. So there's my tips for your shin splints. If you're weak, you try to return to running, make sure you do some strengthening work. Give these a shot, see how that goes, and we'll see you next time.